Hi, I'm Amy from the blog OurAmiableFarmhouse.com and today I'm going to show you a really simple knitting tutorial how to knit a farmhouse style dishcloth. I love these sweet little dishcloths. They are perfect to use for washing dishes, cleaning up around the house, wiping down the counters, and the nice cotton yarn really absorbs and scrubs and washes up really well. In my opinion, it's just as good as any dishcloth that you would buy, but I prefer to use something that I made with my own two hands where I used a skill that maybe perhaps I didn't know before, thus furthering my skills around here on our little homestead. These work up really fast, especially after you've done one or two of them and you start really getting the hang of it, and perfect gifts for gift baskets on different occasions like Mother's Days, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, maybe a hostess gift, wedding showers, or just simply for yourself. The simplicity of just creating something with your own two hands brings me great joy because I had to take the time to sit down and learn something new which made me feel better about myself and gave me the opportunity to create something that I could use around my house. And just taking out that extra time carved out from your busy day-to-day -day schedule to sit in a chair and do something relaxing like knitting, I think really helps to give you some rest in a way. Grab some yarn and some knitting needles and follow along in this tutorial. Today, I'm showing you this simple knit farmhouse dishcloth. It only uses two stitches, the knit and the purl. I like to make my dishcloths in this, this dark gray color. It doesn't show staining as much. Here I've got a work in progress of this um, beautiful off-white color. But as you can imagine, the first crock pot that you made a roast in, <laughs> or that pot of spaghetti sauce, um, this would stain pretty easily. And so I don't tend to use this color much in the kitchen, but I just thought I'd try it out. First thing you want to do is make a slip knot. technique I like to use is called the cast on knit stitch and that's where you basically just kill two birds with one stone and instead of the traditional casting on you're going to cast on with a knit at the same time so essentially you're casting on and knitting your first row all in one shot this dishcloth is made up in increments of twos. So if you want to uh, change the dimension, then you would adjust it either larger or smaller in increments of two. I'm going to cast on knit for 36 stitches. And to do this cast on knit stitch, you simply take your right needle, and go down into the stitch and you wrap your yarn in the back and this can be a little difficult at first to get started for me it is draw up a loop and then I'm going to twist my right needle and bring my left needle in behind so I'll do that again slowly so you can see and just draw up a loop, twist, and put my needle down. So now you can see I have three stitches on my needle. I find that if I draw up a loop bigger than than, than I need, it's easier to twist and put my needle through. So let's do that again a little bit slower. 
I'm going to wrap my yarn around my right needle, draw up a loop, twist, and put my left needle down through that loop. And once you get used to it, it kind of becomes a rhythm. Also, the style of knitting I like and prefer to do is called continental, where I'm using my left hand to anchor the working yarn. And so I'm not grabbing the yarn with my right hand and doing a lot of this motion. It's just staying stationary, the yarn, in my left hand. And I use index and middle fingers to manipulate the yarn where I need it to go or to adjust the uh, tightness of the yarn. So I'm going to cast on knit 36 stitches today. I've done 40 in the past, maybe even 38, and I find the rag just a little, or the dishcloth just a little too big, so Today I'm going to do 36 and if you're knitting along with me, go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here. Now we have 36 cast on knit stitches on our needle and I just like to straighten this up so it's not twisting like this. That's not how we want to start off. Make sure that these loop edges down here are facing downward. And now we're going to knit across the row and we're going to do this for eight rows. Now I find that to keep track, I like to have a piece of paper and just mark every time I get to the end of a row. I'm going to knit across this row uh, and I'm going to, for those eight rows, I'm going to do a garter stitch, which means I'm just knitting each row. When I knit this row and it's on this needle and I turn it over, I'll knit again for eight rows. And on this pattern, to keep a nice edge along your work, like this, this piece, so that you don't have to go back and do a finishing edge, we are going to, at the beginning of, at the beginning of each row, we're going to just slip the stitch right off onto the other needle and at the end of the row, we're going to purl the stitch. And we'll do that for every row and it will keep a nice edge on our dishcloth so we don't have to go back and do any kind of edging work. Now on this first row, I am going to knit the first stitch, just like that, instead of slipping it off. I'll show you on the next row where we'll just slip it off. But this first row, we're going to actually knit the stitch. And then I'm going to knit all the way across the row. And that's simply putting your needle down into the loop for the stitch and drawing up a loop of your working yarn. And then and then slipping that stitch off. just like that. Now I haven't been knitting very long at all. Only the last couple years I've taught myself and I haven't really worked up a lot of projects. I did a throw for the living room and I think that was about it. Oh, I think I might have knit a few hats course for other people. I hardly have anything for myself. <laughs> um, but until recently, um, I started knitting dishcloths. And I really like how the cotton yarn works up and is so sturdy in the kitchen. And I just like the fabric much more. So I'm just going to knit all the way across the row. 
and meet you back here. Remember the last stitch of each row, we're going to purl. Which means that we're going to bring our working yarn to the front of your left needle. And we're going to go in the front of the loop and wrap that yarn around and take your needle to the back and then you just slip it off of there. Now we're ready to switch our needles around. And I'm going to get my piece of paper so I can keep track of what row I'm on. And then knit stitch each row, seven more rows. And remember at the beginning of each row, we're just going to slip off the stitch onto our right needle and then continue knitting across the row. And when we get to the end of the row, we'll purl stitch that last stitch. And that's gonna give us a nice clean edging. I like projects that work up fast and kind of uh, do multiples, uh, multiple things at once, kind of like our cast on to knit foundation row that we did. It saves time and looks nice. And that is what I love. Get to the end of the row, the last stitch I'm going to purl. I'm using circular needles, but I like the circular needles because um, they just feel good in my hand. They're small, um, not too much to deal with, whereas these longer needles, I don't like so much. They're kind of cumbersome, and they make a lot of noise too when I'm knitting. <laughs> it kind of gets irritating. It's not something you can do in church, let's just say. It draws a lot of attention. Not that I would know anything about that. <laughs> So I am, I knit, I knit another, finished another knit row, so I'm going to just mark it off and I'm going to do that for six more rows. Slip stitch, we're slipping off the first stitch and then knitting across and I do that for six more rows. Remember to slip the first stitch and purl the last stitch of every row so we have a nice clean edge and I will meet you back here after you've finished those eight rows. Now we've finished the eight rows of knit and we are going to add a little accent band of stock and net stitch. So that basically means we're going to knit um, across the row and then, then we're going to purl one row and we alternate for six rows, knit one, purl one, or I should say knit one whole row and then purl one whole row. And I will keep track on my paper. I've done this before in other projects, uh, other dishcloths that I made. And so I'm just gonna keep a little tally mark and the K is for my knit and P was for my purl. And so we're gonna have six rows of knitting one row and then purling the next and alternating back and forth each time. And always um, slipping the first stitch knitwise of each row and purling the last stitch of each row so that we ensure we have that nice clean edge always. So this is my first row of the stock and knit accent so I'm knitting across the row and I'll meet you back here. I'm going to bob my last stitch, purl, and I'm going to mark my first knit. Turn my needles around. 
And I'm going to purl this row, but the first stitch I'm just going to slip off onto my needle, bring my working yarn to the front, and purl. Simply put my right needle into the loop, and take my yarn around, pull through. Just like that. This is why I like the continental method of knitting so much is because it seems to go much faster for me than the traditional way. In fact, I don't even know if I could do the traditional way. I think it, what do they, they hold it like this. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to do it anymore. I know they go like this and then wrap the, I don't know, I don't even know. <laughs> when I first started uh, learning to knit, I did it the traditional way, the way it was taught in a book and online. And then one day I just came across continental knitting and I don't even know if it was from someone in another country. I just, I don't remember, but I remember thinking, wow, that's a lot faster. So I learned to do it this way and never looked back since. All right, so now we've come to the sixth row of our stockinette stitch. So we've created this little band here, a little accent band. And now for the body of the dishcloth, we are simply going to knit each row until the dishcloth measures about eight inches depending on, so, you know, like right now, it's only two and a half, depending on how long you want your cloth. So this is totally customizable to the width and length that you want your dishcloth to be. So just knit away and we'll meet back here later. I've finished about eight inches. I've got start of my cloth. I've got about eight inches and I've finished my garter stitch um, at the wrong side. So this was my last stitch. This would be considered the wrong side because this is the back side of the um, stockinette accent. So now to finish off this dishcloth, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put in six rows of the stockinette stitch and then we're going to finish it with about nine rows of garter stitch and then we'll bind off. So I'm going to do six rows of the stockinette stitch which is knitting one row and then purling the next and alternating like that for six rows and I will do that and meet you back here when we're done. Now you can see I have completed my second accent band of six rows of stockinette stitch. Now I'm going to finish another nine rows of garter stitch, which is just knitting each row. So simply knitting across the entire row remembering to purl the last stitch of each row to keep that nice clean edge. I'll finish nine rows of this and meet you back here. So I finished my nine rows of garter stitch ending on a wrong side row which is this side. This is the right side where you can see the nice band accent here. And now I'm just going to bind off, which secures my stitches and completes the project. And so if you don't know how to bind off, simply going to um, slip the first stitch off onto my right needle. Then I'm going to go into the second stitch 
draw up a loop and then take the back loop the first stitch I've got two stitches on my needle and I'm going to take this first stitch to the right and pull it over the left stitch by using this left needle go under the front and then bring my right needle up and through. I'll do it again for you, really slow. And just like that. It's going to bind off all the stitches all the way across the row. stitch so I'm going to cast off or I should say bind off in curl wise just kind of weave it in wherever it looks like I can wire the yarn. Pull it taut. And snip close to my work and then stretch it back. And it kind of just falls in there and you don't see it. And then I'll do this other final measurement is about 10, 10 by nine and a quarter, roughly. And it's a really nice size for washing dishes. And these make excellent gifts. And I love them for washing dishes. They're pretty, simple, and uh, I really enjoy using them in my kitchen. I'm so glad you stuck with it and joined me for this simple knit farmhouse dishcloth tutorial. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I bring a new video each week on simple food, simple living, simply handmade. Thanks so much for stopping by our amiable farmhouse.